Hi everyone, so you're probably wondering why I'm in the same outfit as last video, but the very obvious answer to that is because I'm filming on the same day. Um, but this is a disappointing products video, and I've wanted to do this video for ages and ages, but I didn't want um, to kind of only have a few products, I wanted to accumulate a fair amount, which I think I have done. And first of all, full disclosure, um, I, every time I say disclosure you're probably like, oh shut up, but um, these products are not necessarily all products that I hate, they're not products that I think kind of are really bad and that you should never buy, they're not products that I think... Um, are bad, the products that might work for different people, but they're products for some reason or another that I didn't get on with or that I found disappointing and I'll talk you through exactly why that is with each product. So please bear that in mind, it's not kind of, you know, slating products because I know people can get really offended about that and that's not the case. But the first one that I've got here, this uh, also it's not necessarily products that, you know, I think I'd never buy again, it's not that, it's just that they disappointed me for some reason. So um, that's why it's called, you know, product, disappointing products, not products I'd never buy again. So the first thing is a deodorant, and it's the Mitchum's Advanced Control Flower Fresh Deodorant. Everybody raves and raves about Mitchum's deodorants, that they're the best, they keep you sweat free, they just work the most um, kind of effectively. I don't find that to be the case. I think they're just like any other deodorant, they don't kind of... They don't keep you sweat free, they're not kind of um, the most strong, they don't make you feel fresher for longer. I don't understand the hype with these, I just think they're like any other deodorant, you know, perfectly fine, but not what everyone makes out to be, so I found that a little bit disappointing. I'll do kind of um, bathroom stuff and then I'll do makeup. Then this one is the Good Things Manuka Honey Nourishing Bath Soak. I picked this up because I saw on Instagram, Sally Hughes um, Instagram, that she was really, really loving it and that it was really good. I don't quite know if maybe I'm using it wrong or what I'm doing with it, but she said that, you know, it was really inexpensive, it gave a really nice kind of foam, but not too much, it gave you a little bit of a milky bath and that it fragranced the whole room. This doesn't have much fragrance when you put it in the bath at all. I mean, in here it smells nice. It smells kind of sweet and honey-like and a little bit like the Laura Mercier um honey bath in is it creme brulee it smells a little bit like that perfectly nice but it doesn't smell like anything in the bath your bathroom doesn't smell it doesn't kind of create that um relaxing scene that i would like when i'm going to have a bath it just was a bubble bath it didn't do much in terms of scent at all so i'm not sure if maybe i got a dud if you've tried this let me know what you think if you, it worked better for you but i didn't really like it um, then this one is a product that it works in some ways, it doesn't in others, and it's the 10 Skin um, Skincare Solution for Unsightly Razor Bumps, Ingrown Hairs and Razor Burn. Looks like this. My issue with this, it helps to help the redness subside if you do have an ingrown hair, it kind of just makes the redness look a bit better. It doesn't get rid of them, it doesn't prevent new ones from forming. And I have an absolute nightmare with ingrown hairs um, on my bikini line, TMI I know, but an absolute nightmare and everyone uh, swears by this, all the reviews were amazing, didn't really work, it kind of just, you know, helps with the redness, it helps to soothe it if you've got one that's kind of a little bit sore, but it doesn't prevent them from coming back and it doesn't kind of get rid of the existing ones, it just kind of soothes the area. So it works in that way, but not effectively enough to warrant kind of the daily application of it I'm afraid but to be honest nothing I've tried that same to grown hair does actually work so um the next one is a toothpaste and it's the is it cure cure prox cure prox I'm not sure white is black tough whitening toothpaste how can a toothpaste be disappointing you ask well it's black and I know that's the whole point of it because the charcoal is supposed to help your teeth be whiter and blah blah blah. I just, I don't like this, the black toothpaste. I find it weird. It goes everywhere. It's really messy. Like when you spit out in the sink, you're spitting out black and it just looks horrible. And I don't like the taste of it. It doesn't taste minty either. It's a very, very strange toothpaste. And I was using it for a little while, you can see. Um, and I bought some normal toothpaste and I was like, no, I don't, I don't like this. I'm not going to use this anymore. So that's a bit of a weird product. Um, then that's everything for... Um, kind of 
toiletries let's do makeup this is a lip liner and this is from sleek and it is a waterproof lip liner which i think is great because lip liner always fades on me and it's in the shade lingerie which let me come a little closer to show you what the shade looks like it's a really really pretty shade so you can see really kind of pretty berry color but the texture of this is absolutely horrible. It's so dry that you literally feel like you've got a clay mask on your lips. It's really dry and it kind of makes everything shrink and you can't quite move your mouth properly. The colour is beautiful. I wore it for the first time the other day and I loved how the colour looked. I put a picture on Instagram, it looked really pretty. It did not wear well, it went bobbly, it went bitty, it made my lips feel really horrible. I really don't like it and I won't be trying any more of those lip liners again. Um, then I have a mascara. This is from a brand that I generally, genu, gen, cross between like, you know, generally, genuinely, couldn't decide which one, generally, um, like their products. And this is their Goddess Mascara and I would think I would usually like this. It's the type of brush that I quite like. It's kind of that plasticky bristle brush, but I just found it to be um, not particularly, it didn't have much impact when it was on the eyes, but not just that, it smudged so badly, like within an hour it was here, it smudged really really badly on me so I, I wouldn't recommend it, it kind of just didn't really impress me. Um, then let's do another mascara. This is something that I really want to love and I keep thinking but maybe it's how I'm using it, but, I, but I, it's I've tried so many different ways and it can't be and it's the Essence Lash Base Mascara so it's basically kind of like a lash primer that you would put on before you put your mascara on and it gives lots and lots of volume, lots of length I might try and do a video once where I show you what it looks like when it's on alone because it's so like it makes your lashes look amazing you look at it and you think god if there was a black mascara that did that to my eyelashes I would be a happy bunny um, but then as soon as you go and put your normal mascara on, A, it turns grey. They recommend for you to um, immediately apply it, which then just takes the product off. If you let it dry and then apply it, it's too crispy and you can't. And it makes your eyelashes look grey, which, you know, brown eyelashes I'm okay with. Grey, I don't really like it so much. So let me know if you've used this, if there's a method to it, if I'm doing it wrong, because it does give a really pretty effect, but it's like pointless because then when you actually put your mascara on it goes away. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Then two other eye products here. Um, this again is kind of just shows you there's certain ones from this line that I really really like. So creamy beige I love and on on bronze I love. And they're the Maybelline colour tattoos. These are the creamy mattes. So I've got two colours right here. This one is um, creme de rose and this one is creme de nude. I was so excited for these, I was waiting for them to come out for ages, I decided that you know they were like the drugstore's answer to MAC paint pots and I love the tone of this one, the kind of yellowy beige tone, but they crease so badly and I don't know what it is because the On and On Bronze doesn't crease, it's literally like one of the only cream eyeshadows that don't crease on me, it doesn't budge, it stays put, it looks amazing all day long. These they crease so easily and I've kind of played around with you know using a primer underneath them and, but that's not the point you don't want to have to use a primer under a cream eyeshadow especially when they're supposed to be like you know 24 hour long lasting whatever nice colours nice textures but they crease really really badly and I don't really get kind of why this line of products is very inconsistent to me I've got a few colours from it quite a few I've probably got like five or six and some of them work nicely, some of them don't, it's inconsistent and I think that's kind of not a great thing to have in a makeup line, but I don't like those. Um, then more eye products. I've got two eyeshadow palettes here. The first one is the Kardashian Beauty, well Chroma, it was called Chroma, I think now it's just Kardashian Beauty isn't it? I think, didn't they have some sort of problem with naming it that or something but it's the little cardazzle palette this is the kim one now to be fair i knew that the shades in this wouldn't necessarily be my shades so much because i think the shades in the chloe palette would suit me more but um it looks like this 
So kind of like grey smoky tones and then it, it flips out from underneath and you get a blusher, bronzer and a highlighter. Really cute palette, you know, like if the colours were good, it's really travel friendly, really compact, really small, just a really good idea. I wish other brands would do these. But it doesn't... The eyeshadows don't blend very nicely. Some of them are okay. I mean, they're, they're pretty enough, but they don't blend very nicely. They're a little bit chalky and they go on patchy. The bronzer, I think the colour of it is a really kind of weird colour. It's just very, very orange. Highlighter is okay. The blusher is alright, fairly pigmented, but it's just a disappointing palette. I don't know what I was expecting. The textures aren't very nice. And that's something that really bugs me with eyeshadows when they're kind of patchy and not easy to work with. Which brings me on to my next thing, um, which is from Too Faced, which is really weird because I've got a few other palettes from them that I do really like. This one's the Romantic Eye Palette, and some of these shadows are really nice, but not all of them. And this one right here, the purple one, um, Ever After, is so hard to blend, it was like one of the only times I'd put my makeup on, I did my makeup and it was so hard to blend and so patchy and horrible, I had to take my makeup off and start again. It, it was that bad and I never do that. I usually can kind of get it to work somehow, blend it in with a lighter colour and kind of make it work. I couldn't, it just was really, really patchy. So some of them are okay. Generally speaking, the shimmery ones are okay. And usually the matte ones from Too Faced are quite nice. Like the pink ones, if they're quite creamy, they work quite nicely. That purple one and this top one here, Unveil, just didn't work. The texture of them was really not nice and hard to work with. Which was a shame because I really liked that combo of the pink and purple there. I'm always looking for a really nice purple eyeshadow. And I always find them a bit patchy. Like even the MAC ones, I, I struggle with purple eyeshadow. And I like it. I think it kind of can give quite a pretty look. But didn't work for me. Then, um, last but not least, I've got kind of a few base products here. First one, I like the product inside, generally. But the packaging, Revlon Colorstay. Why does it need to have this packaging still? It is so impossible to get out because it's quite a thick foundation as it is and I just find it infuriating that the packaging is like this. It just makes me not want to ever use it because I can't be bothered to faff around putting it on my hand and then putting it on my face and waiting for it to come out. And It's a nice product inside but the packaging just lets it down so much and I know that you can buy pumps for it and blah 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 like you can with NARS. Why? Like, you know, it just, I don't understand, it's just so annoying, it's like Rimmel can put pumps on theirs, why can't Revlon? Same goes for NARS, if Rimmel can do it, NARS can do it, do you know what I mean? But, it just makes me not want to use it, because the packaging is so awkward. Um, <coughs> case in point, Rimmel Foundation, this is the Matte Perfection. I did a full review of this, and I... I have a problem with it. I don't think how it looks on my skin is how it's described. They, it's like light perfecting radiance foundation. It doesn't look radiant on me. It looks really kind of just meh. No coverage really. Um, it just kind of doesn't give you a pretty look. You put it on and it's like my skin doesn't actually look any better. It just looks kind of a little bit different. I don't know what it is about this. I know they've reformulated it and they've launched a new one, so maybe the new one's different. Let me know what you think. In fact, like, do you have any favourite Rimmel foundations? Because I don't think I've ever found one from Rimmel that I've really liked. Um, I don't like the one with the orange lid. What's that? Um, wake me up. There's the too much shimmer in that for me. And some of the others I didn't like either. But this one just kind of didn't look like anything on the skin. I find it really kind of just not that great. Um, then the last one is from Soap and Glory and I'm laughing because I um, just find this such a weird product. It's the Trick and Treatment Concealer and it has so much shimmer in it, it is weird. I'm not, I, I get that it's supposed to brighten up under your eyes, I like the texture of it, it's nice kind of creamy gel like texture, if you can see it just there. Nice creamy gel like texture but it has so much shimmer in it like I don't understand why you would want that on your under eye area. I can see how you could maybe use it like as a highlight that would work quite nicely maybe maybe I'll use it as that but 
as a concealer, like why would you want your under eye area to just be full of shimmer? It's like proper, full on, opaque shimmer. <laughs> it brightens the area up a little bit, I suppose, yeah, because it's full of glitter. But I just find it a very weird product. I don't quite understand the point of it. Um, and the shimmer's just not for me. I will maybe use it like on my cupid's bow, that might be nice. And maybe like as a little bit of a highlighter, um, kind of high points of the face, that kind of thing, that might work. But the shimmer in it just really ruins it for me. I find it really weird. So that is it. Those are my disappointing products um, for this video. I am thinking of doing a big clear out of my makeup drawers because I did one before I went away for Christmas um, so I could give my sisters some stuff and I kind of had like a full big bag full but I think I need to do some more because I keep seeing products in there that I think I should get rid of that. So let me know if you'd like me to make a video about that. I don't know if that's interesting for you but I thought kind of January getting rid of stuff making things kind of clean for the new year um, might be of an interest to you so let me know if you'd like that and if you've tried any of the products that I've mentioned I'd love to know your experiences with them whether good or bad and if you've got any rec recommendations for um, anything that's good for ingrown hairs then I would love to know that as well and I will see you in my next video. Bye!